even if you are finance, this is important to understand, if you are finance, you are actually, to a degree, in a better position than the cash guy. Good afternoon, MC Procrastinator here. I hope you guys are all doing well. I am. It's my little girl's birthday in the next couple of days and we have a birthday party later on. So, I'm out enjoying the nice weather that we have today and I decided that I was going to put some information for you guys together around buying a bike. Now, to give you a little bit of a background, I've owned, I don't know, 20 plus bikes over the last 15 years. Now, some of that's down to um, change of circumstances where I may have changed work or I may have had different ideas on what I wanted to get from riding or it might be down to um, where I've decided to move up in engine size. So, taking all that information I have a pretty good breadth and understanding of all the mistakes that I've made that leads me up to today and again I repeat my considerations on uh, changing my bike for and I'm pretty certain an Aprilia Tuano. So I'd like to start by sort of giving you an idea on some of the mistakes that I've made and then I'll sort of put that into some form of structure that will help you when you're buying a bike. I'd also like to comment that um, Previously, before I got into the IT industry, I spent 12 to 15 years in sales marketing. So, from a seller's point of view, working for a dealership or another organization looking to sell a product, I have a really good understanding about the information you provide to people to incentivize them to go and purchase something. I just really want to sort of focus on giving you some helpful advice that will allow you to make better decisions or a decision about purchasing your bike or your first bike or whatever that might be. So, where I'm going to start is that I would recommend before you walk into a dealer and this is probably more focused for dealers just for a moment. I mean there's lots of sort of crossover with regards to a motorcycle um, off of, I don't know, eBay or off of some motor bike, bike magazine or whatever. The first thing that you need to do, and I really mean this, spend some time thinking about what you want to get from motorcycling. Now that might be predetermined for you, that might be um, I commute every day, I want something that's economical, I don't care about looks, it is just transport. It might be you commute every day, but you want to go out on the weekends and, you know, it's budget orientated. That's just a couple of examples, because to be fair, there's so many different scenarios that you can fill in that really sort of dictate to you the direction that you're likely to go when it comes to um, purchasing your bike. So, we'll move on from that. What you need to do is, you'll sit down and you'll, 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 you'll dictate to yourself why you want a motor motorcycle or a motorbike, okay? And then what you'll do is, you'll look at bikes that you think will um, sort of fit into that niche. You might talk to your friends and say, hey look, I'm looking to buy a bike, uh, what do you think, what do you think I should get? And that, that's always a little bit dangerous because when we ask people very early on, what, what do you think I should get? They're going to give what they think that they would get. Okay? And right now you're not really in a position to understand what you, what you want. So what can happen is you go, ah, oh, this guy said, oh, I should get a Ducati 999 or a 1098 or whatever it might be. I'm, go I'm gonna look at that. And then you look at that and you might read a review and go, wow, that just sounds like an amazing bike. 
and then you go into the dealership and you take it for a ride and you just think this is fantastic it might meet your budget requirements perhaps you don't have a budget requirement and then you jump on that bike and the next thing you know you're going out the dealership with a new bike whoa welcome to buyer's remorse for the first couple of weeks you might be too too busy enjoying your bike and getting the attention from your new bike that you might not notice but I guarantee you I guarantee you down the track that buyer's remorse will begin to set in so what can we do when we go out and we're looking to buy something specifically a motorbike this can relate to most things what should we do well let's research it right let's research what different bikes are out there let's look at what we want from a bike and let's try and tie that information up let's try and tie the bikes up that sound like they would fit our use case okay and then what we want to do is once we've kind of shortlisted some bikes whoops once we shortlisted some bikes what the what we want to then do we we want to review them so let's go on youtube let's go in to buy motorcycle magazines or any type of content go into forums and research the bikes that you're interested in now make sure you spend a good bit of time researching don't just put what's the best thing about this motorbike you know would you buy this bike I mean certainly if you put would you buy a Honda CBR 1000 RR you you'll probably you may pick up a couple of negatives but you need to what's the common problems with this bike yeah um, if the bike has ABS put in as an example Honda CBR 1000 RR ABS issues okay what do we find and they'll all you'll always find issues okay but you'll get a good understanding how easy it is to find these things how likely it is that there may be an issue with that particular bike or model so once you've gone through that so now we've done the review process perhaps we have a selection of maybe four five six bikes different brands perhaps a couple of the same brands different types um, perhaps one's a race bike perhaps one's a, a tour perhaps one's a custom whatever you've got it down to what you now want to do is this is the stage where you go right I am now going to go into a dealer and I assuming that you know your budget because that's important as well we need to sort out our budget sorry I actually should have said that so make sure you're looking at things that are within your budget or at least out just outside your budget okay so spend a bit of time defining your budget define your requirements researching the reliability and the user ratings of people that use this bike and then go into a dealer the dealer hmm this should be fun okay so let's look at this in two ways a lot of people see a salesman as the dodgy salesman you know whilst that is true for some people that's no more different than any other type of industry where there's somebody that's exceptionally great at their job and somebody that's not very good at their job and then down the bottom of that pile is somebody that looks to take advantage of others ruin it for others and really has no care in the world and thinks about themselves you will find for the most part whilst the salesman is heavily incentivized by selling something if he's really good for the most part he will do that because he knows his stuff he sold a lot of people and clients bikes he knows how to communicate and he knows how to extract information from you and more importantly he knows that even if you come in and say I want a CBR 1000 RR in my circumstance he will be able to tell you yep yeah, so look I'm just going to give you a little bit of information here um, I know you want to buy a CBR 1000 RR but you just told me that you do this type of riding and you do I don't know maybe two hours of commute there and back every day 
Have you considered perhaps the unfair version, but whatever the equivalent is, of the naked bike? And this is what that would mean to you. And then you might go, ah, oh, wow. You know, I, I, I didn't think about that. You know, and so look, a salesman can be really, really valuable to you. More so than what a friend can. He doesn't see what, you know, goes on every day in people that are looking to buy bikes. He doesn't get that first-hand experience, or she. Sorry, I've been a bit sexist there, leaving you girls out there. So, a salesman really does have a first point of view. He gets to see the people like me that come in that have made mistakes in the past. And if he's good, he'll log that information so that he can make sure that his clients, the people that he sells to, don't do that. Because the last thing you want as a salesperson is somebody to come back and will go, I made the wrong decision in buying this whatever, and I would like to change it. Because that's a tough scenario. It's a tough scenario in a couple of ways. One, that that person is gonna lose money. Two, because you feel that you haven't done your job correctly because they've come back to you and they say they shouldn't have bought this. That may not be the case. And three, it's never that easy selling something to somebody that's bought something off you before and is unhappy with it for whatever reason. So in the dealer, leverage that dealer, okay? Leverage them. You will know if that person is looking to help you or not. Now the negatives. The dealer, when you look at a bike that you have decided on, you both agree is relatively the right thing, it will be the best thing since sliced bread. You will go, what is this bike to ride like? Oh, it's fantastic, it's smooth, it's great. The ABS is just second to none. And while that traction control keeps you so safe. Um, is there any negatives? No, we, have, we sell lots of these bikes and everybody enjoys them. And we all know, right, for the most part that may be true. But of course, of course, they'll have issues. Of course they will. So we just have to make sure that when we're buying something, we listen to the things that we know are true and we rule out the things that we feel might not be so true because we can research them later on. So the next thing is, make sure you tell that salesman or the dealer or the person that you're liaising with to purchase the motorcycle make sure you tell them that you want to ride the bike because there's a couple of things that go on here one we're pretty far down the track now because we know we've researched our bike we've fu we fiddled it down or we've shortlisted it down sorry to a couple of bikes but all that's based on reviews information videos we've watched we may have sat on the bike and gone it's comfy but we really never, ever, ever should buy a bike without riding it. And when I say ride that bike, I don't mean ride that bike for one minute, five minutes, start it up and run it down the road. I mean really ride that bike. You'd be surprised actually how good a salesman can be if he goes, son, no problem, I understand that. That's why they have demonstrator motorbikes. If there is no demonstrator motorbikes, you do not buy that bike. Do you know what? I can list, oh, it has to be at least 70% of the bikes I bought that I did not ride and I just bought based on reviews. And I would review and research the crap out of my bikes. But I'd always make the mistake that I got it so fine-tuned to the right decision that I didn't need to ride the bike. And a lot of that is because I'm such a visual person. So, what you need to do is you need to just say, hey look, I would really like to take this bike. I'm very interested and because of this, do you know what? 
you don't need to explain that, you just need to say, I like to take this out for a good test ride to make sure that it is the right bike for me. And if that person says no, well, hold on a minute now. One, what's wrong with the bike? Two, he can't be on your side because clearly he doesn't care about you because would he go and buy a bike without riding it? And if somebody says no, then what you need to do is you need to, if it's the bike that you, you really think could be the one, just push back a wee bit and say, um, sorry, can I ask why you can't let me test ride this vehicle? If he gives you a reasonable excuse, say no problem, have you got another bike that I can ride? And if he doesn't, you say your goodbyes and you go to the other dealer that has the bike or a different bike that you can take out for a ride and rule in, rule out. So, if you have a short list, which hopefully by this point you do, when you go into that dealer, you make sure you go through every one of your short list. You ask questions like, is there problems with this bike? You know, what's the set, what's the, what's your customer feedback? You know, how often do you get these bikes in? And truthfully, you know, if, if, if they get a lot of these bikes in, there's a good chance that the reason they get a lot of bikes in is one, either they're very, very popular from new, or that there's probably a couple of things actually very popular from new or people tend not to like them perhaps they're high cost of maintenance and they trade them back in for something more suitable or perhaps they're an entry level bike so somebody can get their license etc they use that for a period of time and then they change it <clears throat> so just make sure that you you pretty much run off those things you know, you um, understand the kind of cycle around this specific bike you're looking at. And then look, when it comes to that time that you're going to make that decision, you've looked and ruled out all the bikes, you've made sure, you've asked the salesman, hey, um, so before I buy this bike, what other bikes should I consider? I looked at this, this, tell them what you've done and tell them the logic of what you've done just in case there's something else there. At the end of the day, if somebody spent a couple of hours with you, there is always a danger that they get to that point where they just want the sale. So just bear that in mind. So agreeing a price. So lots of different dealerships and sales organizations have different strategies around how to maximize the amount of money that they get from you. Like, we don't discount here. Um, Sorry, our bikes are already on sale. Um, we can't give you anything because it's a dealer special. That's all very well, and in some instances that can be very true. However, one really powerful thing is, actually there's two or three really strong things to motivate a dealer to do a deal with you. One, I will buy now if you give me the deal that I want. I'll offer you and you know I probably say working don't offer something ridiculous like you shouldn't ride a bike that's fifteen thousand dollars when you only have ten thousand dollars to spend the only person disappointed is you and you're wasting the salesman's time okay however if you do have a budget that's extendable based on the right requirements that's different but if you only have $10,000 and you know it's only $10,000, don't go and look at a 15,000 bike and go, oh, I can get that for 10. Or a 12,000 bike can get that for 10. Although with 12,000, you'll probably get closer, but you need to bear in mind, you're gonna have to put more money in. So negotiate and turn around and say, I have the money now, I will give you this cash now. And you know what? Even if you are finance, this is important to understand, if you are finance, you are actually to a degree in a better position than the cash guy. And the reason for that is, if I have to sell a bike that I'm gonna make a thousand dollar profit on and give away $500 of that profit to somebody that's gonna give me cash because I need a sale, I'm gonna be in a much better position if that guy is gonna pay me finance because I'll probably get about $1,500 from the finance company in a back kick. 
So I'm probably going to go, actually, I can write that $500 off because do you know what? I had to make $2,000 because I get the finance. So that's just something to bear in mind. Anyway, so make sure that you tell him either pay cash now or deposit or whatever it is that you can put hard buck down now if he gets the price that you want. Now there will be a couple of to and fro in. He will go back and he will say, oh look, you asked for a thousand dollars, we'll give you 250. Never ever accept the first price. Your next, your next decision here is a key decision. That will be, hey look, thank you very much Mr. Salesman for your time. I appreciate everything you've done, but I can see this bike is probably a little bit more than I wanted to spend. I thought I would have got a little bit more off. So look, I'm just going to go down, I'm going to look at some more bikes at other dealers and see what I can get from there. And I really need to buy something before the end of the month. Now these are extremely important keywords. So the important keywords come, right, where he goes, one, am I going to lose this guy to my competitor? Is he going to give me more money or is he going to give them more money than I did? I can't let them walk. A manager will be like, no, don't let them walk. I'll come and get involved. So at some point, he'll probably go, oh, let me just go and talk to my manager. And then either the manager will go, look, give him another $250, you know, um, or he'll come out and have a chat with you and trying to get involved. Look, I'm the manager. I make the decisions. I give a big long story about how difficult it is to discount this bike, blah, 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 blah. And you know, to be fair, right, these guys do need to make money. Of course they do. It's very important that they stay in business. But it's very important that we look after our bank account. So it's like a, it's like a bit of teamwork, right? If they're helpful, you're helpful. If they don't give you what you want, see how much you can get from them. So he'll come in and he'll maybe offer you, you know, and hey look, right? If you've asked for a thousand dollars and they give you five hundred dollars or six hundred dollars, you know, anything a bit more than half ways, that's a, that's a good shout, right? Again, they have to make money. If you're just being an ass because you want to screw them over for everything, well, you kind of deserve what you get. I'm sure pretty much down the line you will get a, a special steal, but you know, for what? All that extra hassle, you know? It's much better to be able to deal with the guy that has given you great advice and worked really, really hard to get you the bike that you want. So have a think about that. So if talking to the manager, or again the salesman, and he's gone back to the manager, you know, they still know those key words, and that is end of the month, cash, or right now, deposit, you're gonna look at other dealers. They will not forget about you. You will go out, and they, do you know what, actually, one last thing, they, what they might say to us, look, it's a killer, right? It's a game. They will turn around and say to you, oh look, the reason that we can't give you any more money off is because we actually have somebody coming in this afternoon or tomorrow morning to look at this bike. And then you just go, oh my God. Oh, I'm gonna lose this bike. Oh, I'll just, I'll just buy it. I've done that before, even though I know that little trick exists. I've so done that. In fact, that happened with the Aprilia I rode the other day. Um, they said they had three or four people looking at it and my little brain was ticking over going, I should buy it, I should buy it. I'm gonna lose out on this. I'm not gonna get another option again. And you know, my, my sale of my bike fell through and then I thought, wait a minute. Have they really got that many people looking at it? Probably not. You know, so just remember that. So in that instance, what you say is, no problem, I understand that, that's great. Well, good luck selling the bike. I'll have a think about it. Like I said, I'm gonna have a look at a few more bikes and then I will come back to you. And then as the month progresses, what you will very often find is they, they, they have targets to meet. So really speaking, if you're gonna buy something the last week of the month, Maybe the last week and a half, just to give you a bit of time to go around the dealers and do what you need to do, is the best time to buy. It's the best time to buy. 
Because those dealers will do anything to hit their target within reason. Okay, so if you can hold off to the last week, week and a half of the month, you're in a win-win situation right there. So, you've gone round the other dealers, or you've not because they've got the bike you want, but you've held off your excitement and your enthusiasm. Difficult thing to do, I tell you that. And then you get a phone call, maybe two, three days before, or you might have a salesman that's really busy and just forgets about you. So you give them a ring two, three days before the end of the month. So either or, hopefully they'll be doing a good job and they have the staff to be able to give you a ring and say, hey, look, you know, how about we get you back in and talk about this bike again? The back end is a key thing because that means if they can get you in, if it takes them two, three hours, they're going to sell you something. Just make sure you stick it out for as long as possible, okay? Worst case scenario, you walk away, an hour later you give them a ring, yeah, I've made the decision, I'm gonna buy the bike. But usually, it's a, it's a much, it's, you have much more leverage in this specific situation. So, now we're at home, we've either called them or they've called us. And, it's looking good. They said, hey, look, um, have you bought a bike yet? Oh no, look I really really like yours but you know it's, I've decided I'm just gonna hold off till next month because um, yeah I just didn't really want to spend this much money um, I know I can get another deal somebody offered me this one but you know something happened with it whatever right just tell them how it is and he'll go right how about come in look we'll, we'll sort something out for you and if they don't say that and they just say have you bought a bike yet and you go no and they go all right okay just checking on you make sure to turn around and say look is there something else you can do make sure you engage the salesman because you know like you might be talking to a new salesman and he might be unfamiliar with the territory he might not have the confidence to say look come down and i'll sort you a deal just come down let's have a talk let's see what we can do perhaps we've got something else for you but look, come down and we'll do our best to try and get you something that's gonna work for you, all right? So if he can't say that, then it could be confidence or it just could be he's, he's not really that switched on, he's just calling you because the manager told you to call him. So, based on that information, go into the dealer, and look, I guarantee you, if you've done all these things, you're gonna get a bike that you're happy with, that you've not overspent on and you're gonna have a good dealer to be able to look after you in the future. Now, I think the only thing that we need to get from this now is I think I need to listen to my own advice. And when we have our emotions and, you know, that kind of little child in us that wants something new it can actually be a surprisingly difficult thing to control. We're all very, very different. However, these tools, these mental tools and these skills apply to everybody. I'm hoping that my experience across the motor trade and my historical mistakes through purchasing motorcycles will help you have a less wastage of money where you can invest it more into the parts and the, the gear that you want for your motorbike. So guys, for now, I'd like to say goodbye. Please like, share, comment and subscribe. And on that note, see you later. MC Procrastinator out.